What's up, friends? Today, I'm coming to you with a little bit of a warning. And usually, I don't go into warnings, but I feel as though this time, people need to be told that in 2022, if you are planning to buy a home, your budget is more important now than ever. Let me repeat, your budget is more important now than ever. And in this video, I'm gonna explain why. But before we jump into that, a little bit of house cleaning. I'm Chris Nelson with Genstone Realty, the team lead of the Nelson Home Group, and this channel is all about real estate advice, tips, and tech. So if any of that excites you, you are in the right place, but do me a favor, drop me a comment, hit that thumbs up, consider subscribing, and mash that bell so you're notified of my future content. So as I mentioned in 2022, having a budget when you are buying a home is more important than ever. As a matter of fact, in my experience, most of the time buyers actually focus on what they've been pre-approved for and not an actual budget. They don't focus on what they want their payment to be and they don't focus on their expenses. So I wanna start this out by giving you a little bit of facts or a little bit of information about the, the real estate market here in the US. In February, 2022, there were over 25,000 foreclosure filings in that month alone, which was up 9% from the previous month and up 129% from a year ago. So the writing's on the wall. Now, I'm gonna add to that by stating that the actual foreclosure completion, the amount of properties that have actually gone into foreclosure and then taken back by a servicer, well, those numbers have actually dropped and there's a reason for that. And a lot of that has to do with the amount of equity that people have. But what I want you to focus on is the fact that Servicers are filing foreclosure in volume, meaning that homeowners are under pressure or having some financial issues. And a lot of that has to do with not having a budget. So why is it important? As I mentioned, most buyers focus on what they've been pre-approved for. So for example, if I have a buyer who's been pre-approved for 300,000, they come to me and tell me they wanna buy a home for $300,000. That's what their pre-approval allows them to do. But at the end of the day, they don't focus on what they want their mortgage payment to be, how much they can comfortably afford on a monthly basis. Now, when you go and you apply for a mortgage, people are familiar with terms like debt to income ratio or back end debt. Your debt to income ratio is literally how much money you make versus how much debt you have. And there's a, there's a ratio that's put on that. And that determines how much money a bank can lend you or whether or not they can lend you money at all. If your debt is too high and your income won't support a mortgage payment, well, you won't be approved for a loan. But what people don't take into consideration, especially your lender, is what's referred to as your front end debt. The easiest way to think about this is your back-end debt is anything that surfaces on your actual credit report. So your credit cards, your car payment, uh, student loans if you have them and, and they're actually being reported, and so forth. Any of those things that are on your credit report is your back-end debt. Your lender takes that into consideration when approving you for a loan, but they don't take into consideration, as I mentioned, the front end, which is the opposite. Everything that is not on your credit report, all of the things that you need to survive or do to maintain your quality of life, well, your servicer doesn't take that into consideration. And a lot of times, neither do buyers. And right now, when we're seeing everything in the market change, a lot of it has to do with um, what's currently going on uh, with the war. And we've also, as of this week, uh, have recently found out that China is preparing for another shutdown due to another wave of COVID. But things to take into consideration when it comes to your budget are things such as putting food on the table. Uh, if you have a child and they're in childcare or you have some type of childcare expense, that is something that you need to take into consideration. You have to put Gas in your car, and well, going back to current events, gas is astronomical. I drive a four-door sedan, and I put $70 worth of gas in my car the other day. And as much as I drive, I'm doing that three times a week. Well, if I were to apply for a loan right now, my lender is not going to take into consideration that I'm spending almost $800 a month in gas. But now you're buying a home. So you're gonna to need to consider the fact that you have to heat the home in the winter and keep it cool during the summer. You're gonna to need to keep the lights on. 
there's all of these new expenses that are going to come and be on your front end of your debt. Uh, if you have insurance, car insurance, life insurance, health insurance, all of these things which you still need to maintain are considered front end debt, but not factored in to your pre-approval amount. So I promise you, uh, going back to China in their recent shutdown, we're, we're talking about um, additional delays. So we are, we're expecting to see prices increase for our electronic goods and some other goods. If you are buying a house that has either natural gas, propane, or oil, well, you can only imagine how much more it's going to cost to fuel those homes. Please, if anything, be proactive, come up with a budget, stop paying more for these houses than you can honestly afford. I have been on the default side of things as a licensed realtor, I've been licensed for 21 years. And of those 15 years, I have also been in the default space, working hand in hand with servicers and lenders to help them when there is a situation such as a foreclosure. And I can tell you, I come in contact with people quite often. And one thing that I've noticed is that when they are in foreclosure or going through a, through a foreclosure, one thing people have a hard time doing is changing their quality of life. Most people aren't able to take their, their child out of daycare. Uh, most people still need to maintain the same amount of gas to get to and from work or they still need to pay out of pocket maybe for health insurance or life insurance or, or some of these other things. So ultimately life won't stop and people scramble and feel a lot of pressure when they have to change. So, and that's where when I come into play and a lot of times there's very little that can be done to keep the home from going to foreclosure or, or maybe being sold if you have that equity. So as challenging as it is to buy a home, I know that inventory is extremely low and offers are still coming in uh, on homes in volume, but when you buy a home, you, you, you should want to stay in it. And if you're not creating a budget, uh, well, there's a good chance that I could be knocking on your door in a few years down the road trying to uh, figure out how and why you're in a foreclosure situation. So if anything, my friends, if you need help with any of this, uh, let me know. Feel free to reach out. Uh, if you are a buyer, uh, feel free to download my new buyer's guide below. Um, and with all that being said, once again, I'm Chris Nelson with Genstone Realty. Uh, do me a favor, check in next week for the very next Just the Tip with Chris. Until then, take care.